Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Can I have my slides? Okay. So I'll be speaking on radiation pneumonitis in lung cancer. Um, as we all have heard, Dr. The Dr. Ashish and Dr. Muzimil that you know, immunotherapy has changed the management and targeted therapy has changed the management of lung cancer. It's very true. Uh, so because uh, you know, in the last decade or so, we were not able to see the patient on follow-up. Uh, after six months or nine months, we were not able to see the patient on follow-up because they were not surviving. Now we uh, now these patients are surviving. So we are seeing a toxicity which were there, but we were not able to see. Now we are seeing, so we are discussing this. So uh, we need to see this you know, toxicity in a greater detail and we need to have a multidisciplinary discussion about how we can predict those toxicity and how we can earliest to earliest prevent those toxicity. So uh, I'll not take much of the time here. The, the stage-wise management of non-small cell lung cancer, everyone is aware of. As I will be only highlighting that the radiation therapy is an important modality in the treatment of non-small cell lung cancer from stage one to stage three, where you have a concurrent chemo radiation therapy. And also in stage four non-small cell lung cancer, the role of radiation therapy to higher doses to any oligometastatic or oligoprogression is increasing. So we will be seeing a lot of radiation induced pneumonitis in the lung cancer patient population. So uh, given a talk about the radiotherapy dose, uh, we do the SBRT in stage one non-small cell lung cancer, T1 to T2, N0. And the doses are 12 gray into 5 fraction. The biologically effective dose is 132 gray, which is way higher than a normal conventional fractionated dose. In stage 3 non-small cell lung cancer, it is the CTRT concomitant chemo radiation therapy followed by dovilumab. The radiation doses are the 60 to 66 gray, 30 to 33 fraction. The BED is approximately 72 gray. Here, the point of note is that the dose fractionation is different. Here, we are delivering in one single fraction 12 gray in SBRT but to a smaller volume. In last, in, in stage 3 non-small cell lung cancer, the volume is large. Hence, we are delivering the doses in 2 gray per fraction. So, there is a difference here. And dose fractionation is an important predictor or parameter for radiation-induced factor. So, it's, it's an important parameter for radiation-induced pneumonitis. Now, what are the lung constraints? Because when we do the radiation therapy planning for non-small cell lung cancer, we have certain restriction that we should not cross we should not go beyond because the literature says that if you go beyond these parameters, the incidence of radiation-induced pneumonitis or any toxicity will increase to an extent that more than 30% or more than 35%. For example, V20. Here, V20 means is the volume of the lung minus the target volume. The target volume we are treating, but not the normal lung. So the normal lung, so which is outside the target volume, what is the dose of the radiation of the 20 gray, the volume is receiving. So if the volume is receiving less than 10 gray, so it's okay. If the mean lung dose to the entire lung, what is the mean dose of the radiation therapy? In SBRT, it is, if it is less than 10 gray, we are okay. We, do, we will not have a radiation-induced pneumonitis to a greater extent, for example, grade 3 or higher. For the CTRT, the V20 gray should be less than 35%. Means the normal lung should not be more than 35% that is being received a dose of 20 gray. In mean lung dose should be less than 20 gray. V5 gray, that is the low dose volume to the lung. In large, in stage 3 non-small cell lung cancer, V5 will be to the tune of 60% to 80% or 90%. But we need to be careful about that. V5 gray should be less than 70%. As you can see in this picture, on the right hand side, the 20 gray volume and the 5 gray volume. The bilateral lung on the upper zone is receiving 5 gray. Now, what is radiation pneumonitis? Radiation pneumonitis generally basically means it is the inflammation of the lung due to the radiation therapy to the thorax. Its incidence varies between 15 to 40 percent depending on various you know, risk factors. The risk factors are very profound. You will have to take into consideration the patient factor, the tumor factor and the treatment related factor. The onset of radiation pneumonitis is generally within first 12 months but with a peak onset at 1 to 3 months. Now, what is the pathophysiology of the radiation-induced pneumonitis? There are two ways that the radiation can damage the normal lung. First one is the direct DNA damage, which will lead to the cell loss, cell integrity, and the, and the permeability, so which will lead to the edema, and it will cause an early phase of the radiation pneumonitis. And then there's a late phase of radiation pneumonitis where all the cytokines, like interleukin-1, interleukin-6, THGF-beta, TNF-alpha, 
uh, and they will promote the fibrosis and then so progressively the interstitial inflammation will develop into a radiation induced fibrosis which will be seen later approximately 6 to 9 months after the completion of chemo radiation therapy now what are the signs and symptoms of radiation pneumonitis the symptom onset is generally gradual and generally manifest after the development of radiological changes so the symptomatic radiation pneumonitis will come later but the radiological so radiation induced pneumonitis will come slightly earlier and the most common symptoms are cough the dyspnea low grade fever and chest pain it is not uh, hard and fast that the patient will have all the symptoms the patient might have only cough may not have fever the diagnostic history is the radiation therapy to the thorax if you see any patient who has got an interstitial inflammation like this and and there is a pattern to it as dr muzaffil has already mentioned that there is an non anatomic border to the radiation therapy pneumonitis then you should so definitely ask if the patient has received any intent of radiation therapy to the thorax classical radiological sign is the non anatomic border and the ct thorax is more sensitive than the x ray of the chest for detecting the radiation induced pneumonitis there are various grading of pneumonitis because people used to see the radiation pneumonitis in a different way as per the medical oncology the radiation oncology so rtog grading especially here the grade 3 radiation induced pneumonitis where you will need the steroid or oxygen for symptomatic benefit of the radiation induced pneumonitis and it is the most worsening grade of radiation induced pneumonitis grade 3 or higher now what are the incidences of pneumonitis in stage 3 non small cell lung cancer as we have seen in the proclaim study where they have studied the two different combination of the chemotherapy plus radiation therapy the incidence of grade 3 or higher radiation pneumonitis is only 2% to 3% it increases to rtog 0617 in the 60 gram to 7% but it is less than 10% so if it has been done properly the radiation induced pneumonitis the symptomatic one will be lesser than 10% so what are the risk factors for radiation induced pneumonitis you have elderly people are more prone for having a radiation induced pneumonitis females are more prone copd obviously the dosimetric parameters and the concomitant taxane based chemotherapy or gemcitabine interstitial lung disease so so this is the one word that we fear the most whenever we talk about the thoracic radiation oncology whenever we see a patient or a report of interstitial lung disease then we are of the opinion that we should be very cautious about the radiation therapy to the thorax so because there is no threshold for the radiation induced pneumonitis here no threshold will work you can have the you have worsening of the ild features as low as 5 gray also i'm i'm talking about the total dose 5 gray not the 60 gray 5 gray you will have the changes of interstitial lung disease and patient can go symptomatically bad poor performance status there are genetic predisposition like the single nucleotide polymorphism in various gene the non smoker are prone for radiation induced pneumonitis high dose per fractionation these are the risk factors for radiation induced pneumonitis so these are the dosimetric predictors that i have already mentioned you the v20 the volume of the total lung minus the target volume which has been receiving the 20 gray dose mean lung dose v5 volume of the total lung minus ptv receiving 5 gray and obviously the and obviously the pulmonary function test parameter like the fev1 and the dlco values so these are the lung doses and the pneumonitis risk as you can see here the v20 gray is the most important parameter and it has been shown consistently in the literature that it has had it has a direct correlation with the incidence of pneumonitis and mean lung dose should be less than 20 gray what will happen if you cross this limit so as you can see in this picture the v20 gray if it is less than 22% the incidence of radiation induced pneumonitis will be non existent grade 3 to 5 will be zero but if we increase the v20 to more than 40% one fourth of the patient will have grade 3 or higher radiation induced pneumonitis and the radiation induced pneumonitis because of the bad quality of life and the impact it can have an impact on the overall survival also if we see the v20 less than 35% the patient can survive for 24 months it's a retrospective analysis and if the v20 is more than 35% the median survival goes down to only 12 month what are the risk stratification so this is the individual patient data meta analysis so published by dr david parma here they have shown and the, and they have divided the patient into high risk intermediate risk and low risk if the patient is receiving the taxane based chemotherapy and age is more than 65 the patient will be considered as high risk for rip if the age is less than 65 and the mean lung dose is more than 10 gray it would be called as intermediate risk 
If the mean land dose is less than 10 gray, it will be low risk. If the patient is receiving the cisplatin and etoprocyte but non-taxane-based chemotherapy, if the V20 is more than 25%, the patient will be classified as intermediate risk. And if the V20 is less than 25, it would be low risk. So we need to triage our patient. We need to predict and we need to identify them into high risk, intermediate risk and low risk. And we'll have to take the preventive measures to reduce the incidence of radiation-induced pneumonitis. So does the PFT parameters predict the radiation in, 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 of induced pneumonitis? There are various studies which have shown consistently that there is a evidence to show that PFT parameters will predict the radiation induced pneumonitis. However, there is no definite cutoff value that you will have that FEV1, if it is less than one liter, then it will definitely cause the radiation induced pneumonitis. If it is more than two liter, it will not cause the radiation uh, uh, induced pneumonitis. It all depends upon the patient factors also, as well as your treatment factor. If the volume is large, if the FEV1 is more than two liter also, then the patient can develop radiation induced pneumonitis. They will predict the incidence of pneumonitis, but there is no uh, absolute cutoff value. Now, so what are the changes in the PFT parameters after SVRT? We have all seen when we see the patient on the follow-up with the PFT uh, uh, test that there is a decline in the FEV1 values as well as the DLCO values to a tune of 10 to 15 percent after the completion of the radiation therapy. And this is more pronounced when the patient is having a symptomatic radiation pneumonitis as compared to non-symptomatic or asymptomatic radiation induced pneumonitis. But with the SBRT, as the volume is very low, as the tumor size is less than 2 cm or 3 cm, the volume that is being irradiated with the V20 gray is very less. So the chances of having a symptomatic radiation pneumonitis is close to 0%, 0% unless and until the patient is having an FEV1 of only 400 ml. Now, these are the changes in PFT parameters after CTRT. The same effect will be seen after CTRT, but to a larger and more prominent way that the FEV1, FVC and the DLCO, they all will reduce to the extent of 10 to 15%. And, and this is the most important parameter that if you have a compromised pulmonary function test parameters, then you need to be careful because the patient will land up in 10 to 15 percent decline at the rate of three months or the six months. Now, what are the biologic predictors? There are various biological so predictors of radiation induced pneumonitis, but none have have actually come into the clinical practice because these are not the only predictors of the radiation induced pneumonitis. For example, TGF beta as well as the serum dioxide mutase. So, so these are the biological predictors. Now, how can we do the radiation planning in a better way to prevent the incidence of radiation pneumonitis? There are various techniques of radiation therapy where you can have the radiation of your lung doses. For example, 3D CRD, where you will just uh, so where you will just put the radiation beam in different directions so that you have a conformal coverage of the target volume, but it will also increase the normal tissue toxicity. So with the help of intensity modulated radiation therapy, you can actually draw the tumor and so you can have the dose conformality very good. So with the help of IMRT and you can have a lesser incidence of pneumonitis as you can see in this particular table, then the incidence of pneumonitis is, has gone down from 8% to 3.5%. So that means a 50% reduction of grade 3 pneumonitis. Now, this is a picture that uh, I wanted to show you that this is the RT planning uh, on the left hand side top is the 20 gray volume. As you can see, the target volume is being covered as well as the normal lung, so which is getting so irradiated to a dose of 20 gray. So at conclusion, you will see certain amount of changes in the X-ray chest, but at the three months, so these are the radiological as well as the patient can be symptomatic. And here you can see that in the right hand side, this particular area of the lung where my arrow is pointing, so this will not have any or lesser amount of radiological induced changes or radiation induced changes. And this will slowly and slowly, gradually, it will resolve. But so with the advent of immunotherapy, map, the radiation therapy, if there is a history of radiation therapy, the incidence of pneumonitis can increase when you are delivering the map. So you have to be very careful when you have the map in treatment modality. Now, the effect of radiation therapy and the immune checkpoint inhibitor, there is a synergistic effect for the tumor response and possibly for pneumonitis also because they increase the release of tumor antigen and specific T cell with the help of radiation therapy. It also alters the tumor macro environment, upregulate the targetable tumor marker. It also enhances the effect of pro-inflammatory cytokines like the interleukin-2 and interleukin-6. 
सो यहाँ पे दिस इज की नोट जीरो जीरो वन ट्रायल फेज वन ट्रायल दे हैव शोन दैट व्हेन यू डिलीवर द पेशेंट यहाँ पे द इम्यूनोथेरेपी एंड दे व्हेन दे डिवाइडेड इनटू नो प्रीवियस थोरासिक रेडिएशन थेरेपी एंड प्रीवियस थोरासिक रेडिएशन थेरेपी यू कैन सी द जंप इन द न्यूमोनाइटिस एंड द रेस्पिरेटरी फेलियर रेट व्हेन द पेशेंट हैज ऑलरेडी रिसीव्ड प्रीवियस थोरासिक रेडिएशन थेरेपी मे बी फॉर पैलिएटिव इंटेंट बट द इंसिडेंस ऑफ न्यूमोनाइटिस और रेस्पिरेटरी फेलियर विल इंक्रीज सो इन द इवेंट ऑफ सो इन द एरा ऑफ इम्यूनोथेरेपी यू विल हैव टू बी वेरी केयरफुल when we are delivering the radiation therapy to the thorax and this is the pacific study the adjuvant durolumab you can see the radiation induced pneumonitis has not increased sub significantly but it has you have increased from 2.6% to 3.5% grade three or higher the discontinuation due to pneumonitis sub discontinuation due to pneumonitis is also as 6.3% versus 4.3% now what is the management of the radiation induced pneumonitis generally the baseline management is the corticosteroid it reduces the inflammatory cell infiltration it also reduces the cytokine expression of tnf alpha interleukin 6 and tgf beta in mice model it has been seen you have seen that the steroid the reduces the death of radiation induced pneumonitis by half and there are newer molecule also like fg3019 it's an antibody that binds with the connective tissue growth factor and reduces the rt associated expression and maybe it will be helpful full in our future that if this molecule can be available in the clinic if the patient is steroid have unresponsive or intolerable have other immunotherapy drugs like the azathioprine and cyclophosphorine can be tried so the treatment generally is the prednisolone to a dose of 60 mg per day for a week and gradually taper 10 mg every week the bronchodilator the antitussive medication and the antibiotic if there is a coexisting infection and the supplemental oxygen if the patient is symptomatic and having a low spo2 and continue the spirometry and the chest physiotherapy it's very important <clears throat> so with this i would like to thank the organizer and dr prashant chajar for giving me this opportunity if there are any question i would be happy to answer thank you sir for a wonderful talk any questions Ashwin, you mentioned about the steroids and the even that, that that's that's very important because you know often uh, th there has been this thing about uh, you know being completely off steroid and you know for somebody even for COPD may require steroid you know you may have an exacerbation or an obstructive disease you may need uh, steroids so my question is you know you give these three week intervals therapy is there a time before which you want the steroid to be off or ten milligram is just okay so the ten mil so what I discuss in that.